Welcome back to Nagios XI Self-Paced Training. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to install and utilize Nagios Business Process Intelligence in XI. The Business Process Intelligence, or BPI add-on, is an advanced grouping tool that allows you to set up more complex dependencies to determine the true state of the network. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that I've already downloaded the add-on from the Nagios Exchange onto my workstation. To install the BPI component, I'm going to access the Admin menu and select Manage Components. I'm going to locate the Nagios BPI zip file and upload it to XI. If the component installed successfully, you should see a success message displayed. Note the message about running the set BPI perm script after installation. Now let's return to the home menu and access the Nagios BPI link. You should see there are two example groups loaded by default. Now before we can add any new groups, we'll need to run the permission script to allow us to create new BPI groups. I'm going to open a PuTTY shell to my Nagios XI server and I'm going to change to the Nagios BPI directory which is noted on the installation instructions on Nagios Exchange. I'm going to execute the set BPI perm script to allow me to write my group configurations to a text configuration file. Now that my permissions are set, I can return to the BPI interface and start creating new groups. The BPI is essentially a rules engine to determine the group's overall state, so it's important to understand what each field item does and how it works, as well as what factors determine a warning or critical group state. Group states are ultimately determined by four simple rules. Uh, factors that create a warning or critical state would be all non-essential members are in a problem state, any essential members are in a problem state, the group's problem count exceeds the warning threshold, or the group's problem count exceeds the critical threshold. We'll start by creating an example group with some random services added. If you need more information about any of the form fields, you can access a field description by simply mousing over the blue question marks next to the fields. I'm going to set my warning threshold at 3 and my critical threshold at 6 for this group, and for now I'm not going to set any essential members. Note that a group problem occurs when any group member is in a non-OK state. That would be if a member is in a warning, critical, or unknown state. Now when we take a look at our group state, we'll see that the warning threshold of 3 has been exceeded, so our group is now in a warning state. Now let's edit our group again and set our critical threshold to 4. And as you can see, this changes our group state to critical since our critical threshold has been hit. Now let's go back and modify our group with some essential members. I'm going to set the default gateway and local switch as essential members and I'm going to turn up the thresholds to a higher count. Now you'll see that even though the thresholds have not been exceeded, the group is still in a critical state, because an essential member is critical. You can identify essential members because they have a double star next to their state. Now let's modify our group once more, and we'll set the down switch as a non-essential member, and add a few others as essential. Note that now the group state is OK since the thresholds have not been exceeded and none of the essential members are in a problem state. One other thing to note for the BPI is that you can define other groups as members and there is no limit as to the depth of your group tree. This can be useful in creating a better visual representation of the real state of the network and determine when real problems are occurring. Future releases of BPI will include integrated checks for BPI groups so the BPI can be used for monitoring and notifications as well. That concludes our tutorial for now. Be sure to check back at nagios.com for the latest news, updates, and tutorials.